Welcome to the Bloomingdale Trail, also known as the 606. This park began its life just after the Great Chicago Fire in 1871. In their efforts to rebuild the city, the council gave permission to the Chicago Pacific Railroad to lay tracks down Bloomingdale Avenue here on Chicago's northwest side. The move helped connect goods from outlying rail ports to the busy Chicago River and supported the city's industrial growth. After the fire, the Chicago's population boomed and dangerous conflicts between residents and trail abounded. Between the 1870s and 1890s, thousands were killed or injured each year due to dangerous rail crossings. As a result, elevating the city's rail lines became a political hot-button issue and a movement for social reformers. In 1893, the city council passed an ordinance mandating that railroads elevate their tracks within six years. The Bloomingdale was one of the last to conform to the new ordinance, completing 1913. In a testament to Chicago and ingenuity, rail service continued uninterrupted through the construction. The embankments were essentially enormous concrete bathtubs filled with soil, stones, and other drainage material. Seven feet thick at the base, the walls had proved sturdy for a hundred years and form a firm foundation for the centerpiece of the Bloomingdale Trail. For nearly a century, the rail lines served the area's manufacturing district, produced items like bicycles, yeast, snuff, ham and organs, Ludwig drums, and much more. Trains rolled overhead until the 1980s when activity slowed to a trickle, and by the mid-1990s, freight service ceased completely. Here we see St. Mary's of the Angels, a spectacular example of Polish cathedral-style architecture. It was designed by the firm of Worthman and Steinbach, who modeled the church's design on St. Peter's Basilica in Rome. St. Mary's has been acclaimed as one of the finest specimens of Roman Renaissance architecture in the United States. The imposing brick edifice with its twin bell towers and magnificent dome was built at a cost of $400,000. Construction took place between 1911 and 1920, delayed by strikes, World War I, and a critical shortage of building materials. Looking at the church today, it's hard to believe that in 1988 St. Mary's was closed and slated to be demolished. Citizens and historians rallied to save the historic structure, and three years later, Cardinal Joseph Bernadine entrusted the administration of the parish and school to the priests of the Opus D. This influential order launched several restoration campaigns which brought the church structure to life once again. Major repairs were made to the dome, roofs, and stained glass windows. Work continued in 1997 on the church interior, and by the 100th anniversary of the parish in 1999, the church had been fully restored with new lighting, doors, and sound system. The 26 roof angels, fully rebuilt, were restored and continue to gleam cheerfully from St. Mary's rooftops. It wouldn't be a tour of Chicago without a Capone-related story. And this one is no different. Al Capone's mentor, Johnny Torrio, got his beer here at 1842 North Walcott from one of Chicago's leading pro-prohibition brewers, Joseph Stenson. With the advent of prohibition in 1919, Stenson amassed a huge fortune, estimated between 12 and 48 million dollars, by supplying beer to Torrio from this North Side brewery. But that might not have been on the only location. Torrio and Stenson also produced beer under the names Fort Dearborn and Malt Maid. Some news reports from back in the day put one of the other breweries here on Winchester Street. After Prohibition, Frank Nitty purchased the company, changed the name to Manhattan, and by 1938 the company boasted of being second to the Pabst Blue Ribbon Company in canned beer production.
Here we have the Brick House. It was created by the New York City-based artist Shakia Booker, who is known for her large outdoor art installations. This undulating, dragon-looking structure is made of recycled rubber tires and steel. It weighs 3 tons and measures 34 feet by 13 feet. Installed in October of 2015, Brick House will remain on the plaza for at least one year with an option to renew it for an additional two years. The title of this mural is the Con Agra Brands Mural because it was underwritten by Con Agra, the packaged food giant that recently moved its headwaters to Chicago. It is the work of renowned muralist Jeff Zimmerman. Said Zimmerman, I wanted to paint this wall. They wanted to let people know they were in Chicago. I showed them a sketch and they said go for it. Work on the 42 by 90 foot mural started on August 29th and completed in October of 2016. The mural showcases several floating heads from people Zimmerman encountered in the Bucktard Park or nearby in places such as the Milwaukee, Damon, and North Avenues intersection. The center of the mural features a cupped hands holding a mound of soil. There is a star shape above the soil that likely will be perceived as a moving cloud. But, Zimmerman said, the geometric form is actually the great stellated dodecahedron symbolizing the universe.